Excellent. Uh, well, thanks, guys, for inviting me out. Thanks to Michael. Thanks to Warren. Uh, so my name is Doug Fink, uh, author of the PowerShell book called PowerShell for Developers. I'm a 10-time Microsoft MVP. I come from a developer background. I build tools. I speak at conferences. I blog. And tonight I'm just going to go through really quick, uh, talk about my PowerShell Excel module and how that makes life really easy when you want to create Excel files. So I'm not going to use an IDE. I'm going to use good old Start Demo. Um, Hopefully that looks visible. So up until now, um, the way that you'd work with Excel is you'd actually create, a, you'd start a new object and you would work with it as a COM object, the component object model. And the way you can do that is by doing a new object. And that actually fires up Excel. It's actually now running. And then if I know how to use the object model inside of Excel, I can make it visible equal true and that should launch it. Now you can see it. And I'm going to control power, I'm going to control Excel from PowerShell to command line. And I can create a workbook, and you can watch as that screen in the back. I'll grab a reference to the worksheet, sheet one, and then I'll start poking values into it. So you can see I'm setting up headers. Next, I can actually put some data like this in there. And this one's really interesting. I can actually poke a formula. Now, this is equal C2 times D2 is a, an Excel formula. And when you can see when it gets poked in, it actually gets calculated. Um, so that's pretty neat all from PowerShell, but we'll just do a couple of more values. I think that's good. Now, that's the way you can interact with Excel today out of the box. It's been around, uh, this has been available for a number of versions in PowerShell. It's awkward if I give this to a user, if I'm putting thousands of rows of data into it, they can actually accidentally click on the sheet while it's doing things. If you want to try and hide it, it gets very cumbersome. So. I like to work in Excel. It's good for data analysis uh, and doing reports and dashboards. So I decided and played for a number of years trying to make this a little bit easier to work with and came up with this. So now as an example, if I wanted to grab uh, my, my process and grab a bunch of properties and I can pipe it into OutGrid View, this is a nice useful tool. I can see my data. I can subset the data by typing it in the filter. Um, I can find all kinds of different things. I like that workflow. So I modeled, I can do the same thing now and I can say export to Excel. So in its simplest format, I can say the same thing, but now instead of outputting into out grid view, I can output it into Excel. So notice I'm not actually doing the counting of am I at row one, row two, row three. In addition, I can take advantage of, as the export Excel takes advantage of the features, so it comes up with a unique list of what's in that, that column, and I can come in here and I can search for different things and I can get a list. In addition, I have the full range of Excel capabilities, like I can take this and multiply it by 100, and I can, if you know how to use Excel, it's all available to you, but it's really simple now to just pump data into it. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. So we'll create a file, and now I'm exporting it to a file, um, and it looks like nothing happened, right? So something did something. Now I have to in, let's all, oh, invoke it. We can open that file. It's the same data as before, and this is an important concept with this. I've added a hyphen show switch, and when I'm developing um, uh, dashboards or reports, I use the hyphen show so I don't have to do, go through both steps. So I can actually pump the data out, do the show, and why is that important? Because with this utility, with this module, you can actually create Excel files on any machine without having Excel installed. The only reason you need Excel installed is to actually view your output. But if I was running this on a bunch of different servers, I can collect data and then run this module, create the Excel spreadsheets, and then I can make it available on a share, or I can email them, or put it somewhere where people in the company can find it. Taking that a couple steps further, uh, let's grab that data. So now I'm going to add a bunch of different parameters. We're going to do a, an include pivot table, include pivot chart, and we're going to pivot based on company, and then take the handles and sum them. Let's see what this gives us in, in Excel. So we come back to the same data. But now we can see that we have a second sheet called pivot table. Let's take a look at that. So it actually, if you know how to use pivot tables, it actually summarizes 
uh, all the companies and then it actually sums up the handles because that's what I told it. So if you know how to use this, you can come in here and you can drop all kinds of things on the pivot tables. If you don't know how to use pivot tables, it's a whole other discussion, but it's worth learning. And you can easily get to it from this PowerShell module uh, with this one line one liner. We'll take uh, that for a couple of more steps. I'll take those same parameters, drop them into a hash table so I can splat them. And now what I'm going to do is say, give me the same data, but I want to change the chart type. So I've surfaced all the different chart types from Excel through the module. So now we get a little bit more eye-popping eye graphics. We can go a couple of steps further with this. And we can say, let's, I don't want to see a legend or uh, show me the category. And we can get nicer graphics like that. So now imagine I can sit here and run this all day long uh, on my servers, grab all kinds of data and present this to management in terms of how they want to look at their data. And then if they're comfortable with Excel, they can begin clicking and dragging and getting crazy charts, anything that they would like. They want to change this. They have that kind of interaction. They can add data back on sheet one, so on and so forth. What else do we have? How am I doing on time? Good? Okay. Uh, so, you've got about five minutes, uh, a little less, four minutes. Perfect. So let's take a look at some uh, other type of data. I'm going to just, for example, grab service, get the service, and I'll grab four properties off of that. Status, name, display, name, and start type. And this is why... Um, I like using the hyphen show. I'm going to also use auto size. So I get a pretty flat report of all the services on my machine, what's running, their name and display name, and what kind of stuff were they manually started, disabled, so on. That's pretty boring. So let's iterate through that. And there's, uh, there's also another function inside of this module called conditional text. So Excel supports that. Uh, and I'm here I'm saying I want a conditional text. Any, anywhere that you find stop in any of the data, I want it to colorize and I'll leave the defaults on. So let's see what this does. Same data, conditional text. Now you can see all of the stops are colorized. We'll do some more. We can uh, do another conditional text are on the word R-U-N-N -N, or on that string. And here we want to have the text color of blue, background color of cyan. The conditional text parameter takes an array so you can put as many conditional texts as you like. And this throws it off to Excel. And now we're getting to better, see a little bit better report. We can see what's running and what's stopped. We don't have to strain our eyes. Where It's all color-coded. And the last one is we'll look for SVC. And we'll colorize that with wheat and green. So now I'm passing in three conditional texts on the same data. And now we've got, we're starting to see a nice report. You can go back and if you wanted to on the start type, you could do the same conditional text, then colorize the automatic, manual, disabled, whatever you'd like. Also in this module, uh, we'll grab some more data. I'm going to grab PM, and I'm going to use a wildcard to grab all the memory uh, property names. There's something called conditional formatting icon sets. And I'm going to tell it just on column C I want to apply this. And C is company is in column A, name is in column B, and PM is in column C. So we only want to look at that data. We want to get a three icon set and an icon type of arrows. The good news is, is both of these parameters are um, autocomplete. So I've surfaced all of the different types of icon sets in, in there so you don't have to memorize them. You can just do uh, drop downs and, and look for what values are, 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 are available and legal for that. We create that conditional text. I'm sorry, the conditional format. And now you can see that the data in the PM field is um, has arrows next to it. About 90 seconds, Doug. Oh, thank you. And if we click on the conditional text up here in the manage, uh, we can actually see and further operate inside of Excel with what we just set up from the command line. So I've got 90 seconds. Let's do uh, one last report. We're going to take this flat. Uh, sorry, we're going to take this flat piece of data, and let's see if we can make it a nice, pretty custom report. So, using all the pieces from Export Excel, I took the flat data here, and we made this nice report. We added grand totals that were not in the data. We uh, gave these nice headers. We also separated the columns, and we also did font formatting. So, I've just barely touched the surface on all of this. Oops. Um, if you want to find out more, 
Uh, there's a bunch of information on the PowerShell uh, GitHub piece, and you can catch up with me in any of this, these networks on Twitter. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thank you for checking it out. Enjoy the rest of the show.